This is the Dhaka River in northern Ghana. It's just a section of it, but like many rivers around the world, it's at risk of drying out because of deforestation and climate change. Now, there's no magic button to undo this, but there is a powerful solution, tree buffers. Tree buffers could be just what we need to stop rivers from drying out. Not only that, they can also solve a lot of other issues, like water pollution. However, it's not always as easy as it seems, and if not done properly, buffers can also be ineffective. That's what this video will be about. We came to see our partners Tree8, whom Ecosia has been working with since 2017. You might have heard me talk about Tree8 in other videos on our channel. Feel free to check them out. In this video, we'll talk about how the more than 4 million trees we've planted and regenerated here thanks to the Ecosia community are truly making a difference to the Dhaka River and the people living around it. Before we start, and in case you're new here, Ecosia is a search engine and a browser. We invest 100% of our profits into climate action. Do consider downloading it, it makes a difference to see how that's the case here in Ghana. I came to Yendi in northern Ghana, traveling from Accra, the capital. I traveled with Elise from Ecosia and Robert from Tree8. Ghana's northern region is a tropical savanna, and it's home to a variety of endemic but endangered wildlife, including mammals like the cob, bird life, and of course various types of plants. In one way or the other, all of these species, including us humans, depend on healthy, clean, and full rivers. But here in Yendi, the Dhaka River is in trouble. Of course, rivers can change and erode naturally as the streams whirl around soil and sediments, but those changes usually happen over a very long period of time. The changes in the Dhaka River have been rushed in by human activity, like farming here, which, as you see, is happening right by the river. Here in Yendi, rural communities depend on agriculture for their livelihood. This means that large areas have historically been deforested to make space for agriculture and animal grazing. That can be effective in the short term, but in the long term, this happens. This is a consequence of having no trees, no vegetation along the river. And so when it rains, and especially a tropical rain as they have here, the force of the water will just flush the soil with it all the way into the river. So at some point, the river is covered in soil and what's left of water just evaporates in these high temperatures. Bringing back plants native to the riverbanks can stop this. So let's look at tree buffers. The technical term for them is riparian buffer, which is basically an area of vegetation along any river. And this is what a young riparian buffer looks like from the inside. This is an Ecosia site. Some of the trees have been planted, others have been helped to grow back uh, through natural regeneration. And the trees are planted at least 60 to 100 meters away from the riverbank on that side. So the river is there, the communities are on the other side. Now when it rains, the soil and so on won't be flushed into the river because there's enough roots to hold the soil together. And most importantly, if any of the farmers are using chemical fertilizers on the farms that are now moved back, those also won't be flushed into the river. Riparian buffers essentially filter out nutrients and sediments, which is especially relevant when rivers flow through farmland or other places where a lot of fertilizers might be used. Because if too many fertilizers run off into the river, that can cause eutrophication. That's when there's so many nutrients in the water that algae start growing in excess, which can deplete the oxygen in the water with a negative domino effect on the entire ecosystem. That's why TreeAid also organizes awareness campaigns to encourage local communities to switch to natural fertilizers. The buffer zone is uh, made up of three tiers. So the first tier runs from zero to 30, where we see uh, there's no, there need not to be any disturbance. It needs to be managed without any disturbance. And from 30 to 60, we say managed forest. That is where you begin to introduce a little bit of planting and a, a little bit of farmers doing vegetable gardens and the rest. And from 60 to 90, that is the cropland and grassland, that's the tier three. There we allow planting and crop la uh, cropping to go on. So uh, farmers can go on with their normal activities whilst tree planting 
and FMNR can equally go on there. Protecting rivers from fertilizer runoff also keeps the pollution out of oceans and lakes that they flow into. In fact, the Dhaka River flows right into a lake all the way in southern Ghana. And part of the reason that the water doesn't yet look very clean is because the activities that we apply with some of the communities here are not yet applied in all of the communities that live along the river. It's that, but also the first rains of the season have whirled around the soil and hence this brownish color. Of course, riparian buffers bring many more benefits. Plants along a river provide shade as the canopy grows, which cools and moderates the temperature of the entire ecosystem, but also of the water. This matters because swings in water temperatures can decrease biodiversity as the oxygen levels keep changing. Already just 30 meters of plants on each side of the river can help keep the water temperature stable. The same as if this river were flowing through a massive forest with super high canopy, providing it with shade, but then also letting the sun in in certain spots. You get the picture. A little behind the scenes, the children really were waiting for me to stop recording to go into the river. You can go into the water if yeah, you want to. <laughs> thank you, thank you for waiting. <laughs> Riparian buffers also serve as wildlife corridors for animals to safely travel through areas of human development. And when leaves, larger pieces of wood and other organic matter fall into the river, this too provides much needed habitat for fish and invertebrates living in the river. Okay, I know I'm doing a lot of face to cameras in this video, but this is insane. This is also one regeneration site along the same river, another riparian buffer. It is so dense and there's canopy already closing down. It is already bringing a lot of shade. It's so much cooler here than it was out in the sun. This is incredible. I just, no words. Of course, riparian buffers aren't a magic solution. Some studies show that certain types of shrubs won't manage to block the runoff of all pesticides, for example. Factors like how long and wide the buffers are, how far upstream they're located, and what plants they include all change their effectiveness. But that's just a good reminder that trees generally are not a magical solution. We need to also minimize pollution in the first place. And then there is a question of how to make sure that the trees we plant along rivers actually stay there for decades to come. Now, if you've been following Ecosia for a while, you know our philosophy. Like any ecosystem, to protect rivers in a long-lasting way, you need to make sure to balance out human needs like growing food with ecological needs. So, how to strike that balance? Sometimes it's just a question of which trees you plant and how they can support people. Which is why the next day we went to meet some of the communities working with Tree Aid and Ecosia. Here in Vincini, the women prepared an incredible meal for us using moringa leaves from trees planted through our partnership. Planting trees like moringa and shea is really making a difference for these communities. The trees yield nutritious nuts and leaves, which they have access to in their own backyard, so they don't have to trek long distances for them anymore. By moving their farms and tree nurseries away from the riverbanks and introducing agroforestry, we're empowering communities to sustain themselves and to generate an additional income by selling the produce directly or processed in local and bigger markets. I remember when we came to start the project in 2018 and testimonies from the communities revealed that right after the rainy season in September, after November, after September, November, December, the river dries completely and you have patches along the river. And this is the same river that the households depend on. Mm. And so when it happens, so there's so much trouble at home especially for the women, traveling long distance to fetch water. And so when we came and we started with activities like the FMNR, planting trees, educating farmers uh, to move back from the riparian or beyond 60 meters, 
from the repairing buffer exactly mm. to do agriculture activities mm. four five years down the line we have seen a great massive change along the dakar river trees growing along the river so much fmnr anr growing along the river and helping the river to stay throughout the whole year and so you would have enough water for the household even for them to equally fetch and come and do their garden so in fact we have seen or i have seen so much difference so much change mm -hmm. since uh, we started working here in 2018. i would say use ecosia uh, so that you can help to grow more trees you can help to uh, alleviate uh, families from poverty you can help families make extra income you can help families improve their household nutrition of course there's more than just the trees Treeaid also supports farmers with educational sessions on how to regenerate trees faster, for example. They're also testing out innovative ways to turn grass into briquettes for cooking that will significantly reduce the amount of wood they'll need for that, which is great news for the trees. Protecting an ecosystem like a river means that you need to take into account all the factors that are endangering it, because you can't change a habit without providing a solution. What's clear is that restoring rivers isn't easy, but planting trees around them is a great first step. As we've seen from the example of tree aid, if you take into account how the land around the river is being used and plant the right tree in the right place, you have a bigger chance at the river being protected in the long term. You might be wondering how we're able to fund projects like these. Ecosia is a search engine like any other. You can download it for free, but we invest 100% of our profits into climate action. We are restoring some of the world's most endangered ecosystems, like the Atlantic Forest in Brazil or Borneo's rainforest in Indonesia. You can see how we spend all of our profits in our financial reports, which we publish every six weeks on our blog, or see the impact you're having through the videos here on YouTube. Ecosia might be the easiest way to contribute to something that sometimes can feel really big and make you feel paralyzed. So if this sounds like something you'd like to be part of, I'm going to leave a link to Ecosia in the description. And here's a video you can watch to learn more about how Ecosia works. Sure. Just in case it wasn't obvious enough, I wanted to show you the Ecosia trees. This is an Ecosia tree. 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 This one that I just bumped into is also an Ecosia tree. This is an Ecosia tree. This is an Ecosia tree. This is an Ecosia tree. So is this one.